What up, what up, what up, my good people? Conditioning for business back on it once more. You know how it goes, drive time edition. So, I gotta handle something today. So today we're gonna take a we're gonna take a we're gonna take a tour on the on the beaten path here. We're gonna go off road for a little bit and discuss a couple of things. Um I wanna discuss uh bad professionalism. Okay, in every single let me just first say this. In every single uh, career path, walk of life, business profession, whatever market you're working in, whatever you're doing out there in the world, there is always going to be a bad professional. Okay? What do I mean by that? Let's, let's, let's break this down a little bit because it's a really annoying circumstance that we all have to endure on occasion once we run across these types of people. And these types of entities and it's very very frustrating and it's annoying to say it the least but we all have to do we all have, we all have to deal with it and we all have to find ways to circumvent it and evade it in order for us to have successful enterprise and move forward okay in this particular sense bad professionalism it stems from entities out there who lack the necessary ability sometimes it can be coupled with lack of necessary training sometimes it's lack of necessary knowledge sometimes it's just utter and uh, ridiculous narcissism. Sometimes it's just cocky behavior and things like that. All in all, it's just most of the time, you're gonna run into people who are, that are not professional in the sense that they don't understand their market, they don't understand their business, they don't understand how to close, or they, they, don't, they don't understand anything about funds or finance or money or all the things that are relative to operating in any type of strategic enterprise out there in the world. Whether it's your business, someone else's business, whatever you're doing, sales. First of all, you have to develop a certain confidence about yourself, but only confidence can be uh, obtained from actually doing a service or doing a work successfully for a given amount of time. They'll, those are the only ways you're really going to have some type of confidence that you can gain or garner because you have to have that running experience. You have to have that, that total body of work to draw upon, to draw from. You have to be able to point to a portfolio and say, that's mine, that's mine, I close this, I close that with a team, and I can draw from that relationship and that experience, and then I can put together uh, all types of uh, understanding as to exactly what I'm doing or what I'm shooting for in the business uh, environment. So I have these things supplanted in my mind or planted in my mind, and I, and I operate off of those because those are my foundational uh, pieces. Those are the elements of my success to draw from. So what happens is you have, to, you have these people out here that, number one, they're acting as if they've got or they, they, they've obtained or some, some level of success that you have not seen or most of the time this is a fallacy, okay? Most of the people out there that make these cocky demands and things like that, they're, they're not professional in the sense that they've actually completed transactions or business. They just have to make the facade seem and appear as, as, as such so that you can buy into whatever they're saying. A lot of these people are full of hot air. Let's be real, hot air. Uh, all this bloviating and things like that. It doesn't go anywhere, but it's just a bunch of things to talk about. And it makes me laugh when I, when I hear these people. And I ask them certain key questions. So number two, uh, you run across the people out there who not only do they not have the experience in the closing rate and the successful track record, you run into a lot of people out there who start throwing stuff against the wall and hope that it sticks. Ah, I hate that. I personally hate that, number one. Don't throw anything against the wall and hope that it sticks. Number one, the reason why you don't do that is because you are playing with house money at that point as one of these kinds of people. Nothing invested is what I mean. It's all about what other people are putting into something and you're just basically hoping for, praying for rain, hoping for a Hail Mary catch. You get into these business transactions with some of these people and you start to know and you start to recognize certain key, certain cues. You start noticing things that they're saying and doing, and you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't make much sense. Why are they saying this? They'll say crazy things and request crazy things that doesn't make sense. Case, case in point, here's an example. You're on the line with a client and the one says, they know they don't have the capability to do what you're asking them to do, but then here's the throwing the wall, here's the throwing the crap against the wall and hope that it sticks. Uh, now, I wanna talk to the person who is in charge of the transaction, the principal, because if I'm a principal, I have a right to talk to a principal. I don't talk to a broker or someone that's in between. Uh, if I'm bringing a specific signatory authority and signatory power to a transaction, then I, I, I demand reciprocation, okay? That's just the way I do it. 
I don't, I don't go through a source of people or third parties to get to the, uh, uh, um, to the pot of gold at the end. No, I want to speak and deal with someone that's an eat of, of equivalent status or uh, stature. So, you get one of these people, you say, I want to speak to the end guy. And then they go, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, okay, now they're posturing because they're trying to keep you from getting to that person. And it's probably because they don't have that relationship already intact or uh, they don't have that uh, contract intact or, or that relationship is just really not what they say it is. So where no relationship exists, there's no transaction or possibility for the fruition of the transaction. You have to look at the truth, okay? Then they'll come back and they'll ask you something crazy. When you shoot that idea down because you can't get the guy online, you're like, no, I don't want to do that. And then what they'll do is they'll come back and say, well, how about you, you fill out all these documents and let's, let's see if the other guy will get, no, again, that's another, uh, 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 I like to call it a diversion. They like to use certain types of uh, strategy to get you off your normal game. Now what that screams to me, all in all, one, two, three there, that it all screams to me that there's a lack of professionalism because there's no set guidelines, there's no set business model. Someone's just trying something. They're asking you to do this, and all of it's completely and utterly ridiculous. And it's not the type of thing you want to ask any prospective client or any prospective business person or prospective partner. You want to bring your best game to the table and they're going to bring their best game to the table. Okay? Everyone brings their best to the table and therefore we end up with a nice pot luck. But if I'm bringing everything and you're bringing scraps, then we're going to have a really shoddy meal. Okay? So you got to get out there and earn your keep and bring the pieces that will make a viable situation go big or go, or go home. And most of the time it's gonna go home because a lot of these guys, they have no capability whatsoever. They say they do, they want you to think that they do. And again, it's just bloviating, a lot of hot air, blowing smoke and, you know, peeing on your leg and tell you it's raining and a lot of tongue in cheek type conversations, but nothing solidified, nothing nothing to draw upon, nothing to actually, uh, uh, nothing formidable enough for you to hang your hat on. I would hang my hat on it. So when you begin to ask your hard questions, you get a lot of, you get a lot of pushback. I'm tired of it, person. I'm tired of hearing about these types of things. I want, I want my, and that's speaking in this message specifically at this point is being directed and relegated to those out there who are non-professional. Please become professional, guys. Whoever you are, if you're out there and you're trying to make things work, well, guess what? You can't be the man on the first run. It takes years to be the man. If you're not the man, don't worry about it. Okay? You're not going to be the man off the, off the run. You're going to have to grow and learn and, and go through trial and error. And you're going to have to practice make perfect type of situations. But you're not going to come out of, off the street and start making the big deals happen, things like that, without going through the muck, uh, crawling on your arms and hands and knees, and, uh, you know, uh, elbows like you do in the army when those bombs are going off. You have to go through all of that to become a strong enough person where you can command these types of things on phone calls and transactions. But if that's not you, don't worry about it. So, so many times people get so lost in trying to be the person that they're not, they forget how to be something valuable. Everybody's like, oh, I don't want, I'm not this guy, I'm not a lowly uh, entry level broker or whatever. Who cares? If you're good at what you do, I don't care if you're a broker or not. Bring good business to the table and then we'll have a conversation, okay? Let's talk about having good business. Let's have good business etiquette, good, great professional etiquette, great professional uh, uh, demeanor. And this is absent right now from a lot of the businesses out there. And it's really frustrating because you get these people who go out there and they want to start grabbing you. You may be in a good place if you're in, in your mind. You may be a, in, a, in a very, very good place professionally. You may have it all pretty much worked out. But what ends up happening is you end up getting tied up with someone who has none of that going on. And they may say they do in the beginning because it may they, some people have the, the game down the first conversation. But around the third, the second phone call, start noticing small things. See, you can't you can't keep a facade up, but, but for so long, okay? If you're out there falsely stating you can do this and you have that, or you're some type big type principal guy, you, you can't you can't lie and and, and, and and spill that, but for a while because seasoned people that are eventually going to poke holes in and they're going to see right through it and going to call you out, like me. I'm going to call you out. I want to say, you know what? You're not who you say you are come back when you have that person and if that if you don't have that person go away because it, it's like what are you doing you're wasting all this time the sugar babies to have trust funds where they can get on the phone and talk to you all day long 
and someone else is paying the bill. Watch out for the sugar babies. I had a I had a video about that some time ago. Sugar babies will waste all your time. You have to be able to recognize the sugar babies. These people get all their bills paid from some trust fund or some you know cougar uh, girlfriend or some sugar daddy or something like that. And these people will they could sit back at by the pool at the day while they're at a, a, a wealthy significant other's place and they can just play around on the on, just just gamble all day, degenerately gamble all day, you know. House money type of thing. Watch out for these house money sugar babies. They'll mess you up. Okay? <laughs> Stay away from them. But you have to be able to, uh, to discern who they are. You have to be able to notice and recognize who they are. But again, it comes back to professionalism. If a person exudes a level of non-professional stature on a call, you have to let them go. Okay? <laughs> so those sugar babies will put you in a situation where you can't recover. And you, you, I mean, you'll waste and, exa and exhaust so much time with these people. You'll lose relationships, you'll lose money, you'll lose business. You have to really learn to watch out for these people. Uh, Non-professional people don't know their business very well. They're not very good at it. And they, and they throw a lot of stuff against the wall, hope that it sticks, uh, ask you to do things they have no correlation of, of, of following through with you on because they can't match your intensity on, on the other side. They're not as, they, 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 watch out for these people. And just be very careful going forward when you actually come across these types of entities because they will put you in a bad position. Uh, learn to ask the right questions uh, to non-professional people. Uh, we, learn to weed them out. Learn to see if they who they, who they say they are, okay? So guys, those are just a couple of things I wanted to run past you. Again, it's Condition for Business, Drive Time Edition. Uh, out and about today, ready to knock it off. Getting dark, so I uh, thank you guys for listening. Have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed day. Thank you. Peace.